Good morning, everybody. It's Jessica from Chambray Blues. I hope you can hear me today. We'll give this another go. Um, I'm using a different device, so hopefully we'll be good with the volume. Um, I am didn't have a lot of questions this week about fit problems, so we're gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna talk about a project that I did, and I got a couple comments and um, some inquiries about that. So we're gonna talk about how you can sew with men's shirts in this um, project. So I started out with two different men's shirts that I liked. I've got them at the thrift store and put them together with um, a contrasting fabric and then made it kind of fun and used the back, um, for the back part, I used the front of one of the other shirts. So we're gonna talk about how to do that. The main thing is to find prints and colors that work together and that's probably the hardest part of the whole project so there are some thrift stores are better than others for men's shirts and i find actually that goodwill has them sorted by color so it makes it a lot easier to find colors that you're looking for because they're all together in a group so if you check out the goodwill store they have a great selection of men's shirts far more than our local saint vincent's does However, they are more expensive. They're probably $5 a shirt, somewhere around there, sometimes even more, depending on the brand. Um, our St. Vincent's has them a little bit cheaper, but they have fewer to choose from. And there's a local, um, I think it's called Dig and Sort St. Vincent's, where you can buy things by the pound. And that, my friends, is the gold mine, because you can get a whole bag of shirts for a few dollars. So that's definitely, the best route to go. Um, we also have a closet of spare clothes at our house, so most of the time I just go in there and dig around and see what I can find um, and kind of put things together from there. But things to look for, so you wanna look for shirts that have fine details, and it's usually the more expensive brands. Like this one is um, Izod, Nautica, Ralph Lauren, um, some of those, more expensive brands have more tailoring details and the fabric's better quality and it's easier to work with. So here, like the pocket has um, a bar tack, a square tack at the top. That's a nice detail. All the buttons have crossed um, stitching, which is nice. The placket is wider. Some of the more um, trendy style men's shirts have narrow plackets and the fabric isn't as good as they wrinkle up when you wash them. Um, they, this one has contrasting fabric inside the collar and um, some of them have it in the cuffs as well. This one doesn't, it does have it in the, um, the placket on the sleeve though. So those are some of the, the things to look for. I also looked for shirts that have a back yoke for this project because it makes an easy place to cut the shirt to insert another piece of fabric. Um, so those, those are probably my top choices, things I look for when I look for shirts. So when I'm choosing colors, I wanted something with blue in it for the bottom half to, to carry the, the blues together. And then the orange colors I picked, the floral had both blue and orange in it, so it all kind of works together. Um, I have a hard time putting prints together. It takes me a while to kind of figure out what I really like together. And men's shirts come in all kinds of things, but rarely prints. You know, you get a plaid, you might get a paisley if you're lucky, but that's about it. So it might take you a little while to find the perfect shirt. So for this project today, I happened to find this purple gingham shirt, which I totally love. It's um, a Sonoma lifestyle shirt, so it's not a great brand. And I noticed after I washed it, it was super wrinkled up. So it's the thinner fabric and it's gonna wrinkle more, but I'm just gonna be more careful when I wash it. So anyway, that's what I'm starting with for my demonstration project. I had in my stash some smaller purple gingham, which I thought would be kind of fun contrast with this. And then I have a floral with some pinks and purples in it. And I also have this stripe that's got brown and blues. And 
I kind of liked the contrast of all these things together. So you can make as many sections as you want to on the back here. I just did two because um, for demonstration purposes, that was just the easiest thing to do. You could put a velvet in there, you could put some lace in there, uh, any number of things depending on what you have in your stash. And I'm just gonna cut a couple of them here and let you know exactly how this went together. So starting from the back, we talked about the yoke. And for this project, we're gonna go down about half an inch from the yoke seam. So with the gingham shirt, it's actually really easy to, to cut right on that line. And we're also gonna cut it from the side seam. I'm gonna start at the hem of the side seam all the way up under the arm, get close to the arm seam, and then all the way across. So you're gonna do that. And uh, we will make room for our new shirt. So when I, I made about a half an inch allowance for a seam, so I'm cutting half an inch away from the edge here. as I work. And you know, if you want to be particular, you can draw it out on the fabric with a pencil. I just winged it and cut. Okay. Cut across the top. So some shirts have a pleat in the back. And even if your shirt doesn't currently have one, that's something you can add. So in this shirt, for example, I added a bit of a pleat here so I'd have more room through the shoulders because it was a little bit snug on me. And I'll show you how we can do that. Just a second. All right, we cut down the other side. Doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna sew onto this seam and no one's really gonna see it. Um, and if you decide to use a pencil to mark it, you can just use a number two pencil. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Probably should have done this earlier, it would have been easier, but I wanted you to see the difference. Okay, so here's my shirt. See, I cut the whole back off. Ooh. This is the front, so we still have the front intact, and the back is gone. All right, so we're gonna save this. We're going to use this for another project, okay? So for the first piece at the top, I wanna to use my floral fabric, because it's um, higher on the back, it's easier to see, and it's a nice visual. So I'm going to lay my fabric out and in order to straighten the top, I want to have a nice straight line here to sew from. So you can trim it with a rotary cutter if you like, but for cotton fabrics, it's really easy just to clip it with your scissors. I usually do it about an inch from the end and just rip it all the way down. And it will be perfectly straight. I know ripping fabric doesn't sound like a good idea, but it comes out perfectly straight. If you give it a good press, then you will have a perfectly straight piece to work with, okay? So I'm going to use my pins. And in this one, I think I had a half an inch pleat. I'm going to make it a bigger one this time. I'm gonna make it a one inch pleat. So I'm gonna fold my fabric over. I'm kind of in the middle of the piece here and I'm going to fold it over uh, an inch so I can stick my finger into it an inch here. And I'm gonna do another one right next to that so that they meet in the middle. And that's going to be my pleat at the center back. You can make it bigger if you want to. You can add gathers here um, if you want a lot more room in the back, you could just put a gathering stitch across the top. That would be another option. Okay, so I'm going to lay my piece down here and then pull out 
what I just cut off, this is going to be like a pattern for the shirt that I had. So after you gather the back or put your pleat in the back, then you can lay this on top and we're gonna cut around it as a sort of a pattern. I'm gonna fold it in half so that I get uh, an idea of where the pleat's going to fall right in the center back and I'm using a pin to mark it. And I'm going to lay that on top of the other piece. And then cut it out. So I'm not gonna do that for you right at this moment, but that's how you would do that. Now let's talk about the distance between the yoke and where I cut it here. So this is just below the waist uh, on the mannequin. On me, it hits me right about the waist. So what I did was I measured from the back of the yoke to my waistline, and it was about 14 inches. So when I go to cut my piece, I want to have that same measurement. Um, you will have to add seam allowance, so if you're adding half an inch here for seam allowance and a half an inch there. I would cut my piece 15 inches in length and that's how I determined the length for this. Okay, so that's how you do the top piece. Then the bottom piece was next. So like I said, I used the front of another shirt for this and I liked the idea of it being um, different lengths in the back. So you can see it's sort of a high-low hem. This is much longer in the back then in the front, that's just the style that I chose. Um, you can do it either way, if you want it longer, fine. If you don't want it longer, uh, then you would measure to the side seam of the front and cut your second piece that distance. And it could be out of anything. Um, I think the stripe works well on the bottom, gives you kind of a longer silhouette uh, so that's why I chose that. But I can also even do half panels here, put maybe the gingham piece on this half and the stripe on this side. There's a number of ways you can put it together. And then all you have to do is sew it. So I sewed this seam first and then pinned it into the garment and try it on, make sure it's all still good, that you're still getting a good fit and then sewed up the side seam, around the armhole, and across the back. It was really a very simple thing to do. Some other options for places where you can add different fabrics would be to the pocket. You could add a strip to the top, top of the pocket. You would probably have to take the whole pocket off, add the strip, and then stitch it back on, or on top of the collar. Or I've even seen um, people do it where they added a piece down the front of the placket or even on the inside of the placket. Um, and that would be just a piece of fabric. You finish the edges on it and sew it right on top of what's there. Maybe um, do a few hand stitch buttonholes to kind of finish it off and then cut the holes for the buttons and you'd be all set. So it's a lot of fun to do and it makes a fun gift for someone, for a birthday present or whatever. And a great way to use up things in your closet and fabric that's in your stash. So that's the idea for today. I'd love to see what you come up with. If you have any questions, of course, leave them here with the video or in the group. I'd be happy to answer them for you. Uh, a couple other things I wanted to talk about. I have um, another project coming up that I'm releasing, another uh, upcoming pattern that's going to be coming out. And I need your input. So if you would give me your vote, I'm going to set up a poll in the group. I'm looking for feedback on what kind of styles you want patterns for coming up in this next um, group of projects that I'm doing. I have one more leopard project left, and then I'm pretty much done with the leopard stuff. So I've got um, a couple things to finish up today, and then you'll see more of that coming out. And I guess that's it for now. So next week with the holiday, the Labor Day holiday, I'm not planning on doing a live on Monday at least. I might be able to do one later in the week. Just see how my schedule goes. Um, otherwise, for sure, I'll be back online the week after that. 
and I hope that you have a great week and happy sewing. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.